April 28th, 1987, Susanna Hoffs and her mom made the round. Not singing, walk like an Egyptian or any Bengals kind of stuff, but promoting their movie, The All Nighter, which starred Susanna as a studious girl and what she did on her last night of college. Hoff's mom had been uh, linked with Leonard Nimoy back in the 60s, and looking at her, you can tell she had a good time celebrating flower power. This interview comes from the short-lived Nightlife series with host David Brenner, who does a really good job interviewing the pair. And there's several other clips from the series on my channel. You don't find them too much. Good, good show. Good guests. Clapped into one. Stanley Jordan. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to Nightlife. Well, here's how most of you, I'm, I'm sure, probably recognize my first guest tonight. Watch this. Okay, well, she's the lead singer of the Bangles and about to make her feature film debut. Please welcome Susanna Hoff. I gotta ask you first off. Cool down, cool down. How did you ever get people? They're regular people, they're not That's actors. Right. How did you get them to walk like that? How well, what'd you say to get them to do that? The director, Gary Weiss, just showed them the moves and they just ad libbed. People will do anything, they right? Yeah. Just, you tell them, you know, you want to do something nuts of being a video, they'll if do it. If you have a camera, if you turn a camera yeah, on. Yeah, anything. Yeah. So where, where, where'd you get that song? It's such a hit now. It's got Actually, top of the charts Actually, I know. Now, right? A guy named Liam Sternberg wrote it. And we just got it in the mail one day, if you can believe that. Really? That's yeah. when you just sent it in? Just sent it in. We heard it, and we were, we loved it. You guys are so hot now. You know, you hear the guys screaming, do you have uh, male groupies? Well, we have male fans. They, they... You don't have groupies that sleep in lobbies well, and... I guess, what's the definition of groupie? Does Guy throws his to... BVDs up with a yeah, key. Yeah, then, I mean, then we did okay. Yeah, then you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> and how do all you guys get along? I mean, before you would think, you know, uh, any, all rock groups have their tensions and all. Yeah, well, we, we get along pretty well. I mean, uh, we sort of know how to fight in a way. You know, we get it out. We get it out when you have to. But we have such fun on stage that... I mean, it's fun what we do. Yeah, it looks We're lucky like, yeah, to sure. be able to have gotten where we, we are. And it's actually, you, but you're friends, right? Yeah. Well, two of the girls are sisters, so that right. that's a pretty heavy bind. You know? But you met, you met, where'd you meet? You met, met in L.A.? It was we like actually, a weird thing how we, you guys got met, together. Right? But it's a real fluke. We met through an ad in the paper, if you can believe that. You're kidding. No. I had a guy show up once with a whip in my house. <laughs> <or not. laughs> yeah. Well, you... <laughs> You have to sort of sort through all the other people who call you up when you put those ads in. But well, what kind of ad was it? I mean, uh, it just was, young uh, women want to form rock group? Yeah, or? no, it was actually just musicians wanting to, you know, start a band, and I listed all my favorite bands, one of which was the Beatles, and that was one of the main ties that we had. And so you got together, and you, you found that you could harmonize? And yeah, it yeah, that was, the, that was the thing that, that made us know that it was right, the, the voices together. Do you think you get treated differently than a male rock band in the business? Do you think there's also a prejudice uh, that uh, goes into rock as well? I don't know. I mean, I, I always knew that I wanted to be a performer, and I never thought that performing was something only men could do. And um, I think rock and roll is very sexual in every way. Uh, all boy bands, you know, you see, that has a very sexual response from the audience. So I think... Uh, it's just the nature of the beast, really. I think there was a time when they wouldn't accept uh, women drummers, guitar players. Yeah, I think that's what uh, people are getting more used to, to see a band playing all their own instruments. You know, I mean, there's been female folk musicians like Joni Mitchell or, you know, for years, mm -hmm. and singers. And how about the road? Does it get to you? Um, it does sometimes, but we, we do have fun. Playing together live is really the best uh, medicine of all. 
Yeah, you get out there and you let it out. No matter yeah, what happens on the road, you let it out. Yeah, I mean, it's great. And the film, now you're starting a whole new career in that yeah. film. So tell us about the film, because I want to show a clip, The All-Nighter. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's the, it's the last day of school for five kids who are graduating from college. They've been friends for four years. Mm -hmm. And I play the kind of uh, studious, quiet, class valedictorian who wakes up on the last day of school and realizes there's a lot of things she didn't do. So she sets out to have her, the best night of her life. She's going to do all that she missed in four years in yeah, one night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see that. Watch, watch your monitors. Wait, wait. Please. Now, this movie... This movie was, uh, is, is produced, directed, and co-written by your mother. That's right. Right? Yep. How'd you get the part? <laughs> Well, well, Don't tell me your answer to that and it turned out to be no. your mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, the part was written for a tall, long-legged, blonde beach bunny. And um, oh, I just... Oh, perfect. I know. I, I, I never thought that they would consider me for it. I, re I remember just reading the script and liking the character for what she felt. So when we would sit around the house, sometimes my mom would have us all read different parts. She liked the way I read it. And then huh? she asked me, will you have time to do this? And I said, sure. Well, let's bring out that person who's no stranger to you. Let's bring out your mom. <laughs> now, I know that in here, uh, and everyone's talking about there's a love scene in there, and, and everyone's questioning about it because you're directing your daughter in a love scene, and you're and a love scene with your mom directing. How was that? I mean, how did you feel directing it? Well, it was fun <laughs> to, to tell her what to do. It was fun to tell her. the <laughs> ultimate, and to tell the guy what to do was even better. That, yeah, then you're yeah. really supervising her right. life. I mean, it's hard enough to do that in front of a group of people watching. Yeah. But it was much harder for the guy, I think. Oh, he yeah, kept he, saying, yeah. your mother's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I kept saying, don't worry, she doesn't mind. <laughs> But, you know, I don't know. It worked out. You think art imitates life, life imitates <laughs> art in this case? Yeah. <laughs> well, how did she do? I mean, how do you think? I mean, in she's the not listening. Scene? How did she do? No, how did she do in the movie? <laughs> in the movie, she was great. She was really great. So, I would I'm think at first you must, have had some, you must have trepidation at first to direct someone in a family, you know, especially the daughter. Well, that's a big responsibility. Yeah. Um, and I, I really felt pretty confident because I've seen her on stage. I mean, she could easily direct me, and maybe next time that's the way it'll be. That'll work. be great. You'll be with someone in a love scene and be saying, Shh, my daughter's there. Dad. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more of the show right after this.